Did you ever work with Madison? I know that name. Oh, yes. Dark hair, yes, girl? crazy Madison. I shot something in England with her. They flew me, they flew me and her to London, England. Um, it was for, it was, it was the English company. And they couldn't, it was illegal to shoot porn there. Everything they got in England was brought over illegally from everywhere else, and obviously Europe and everywhere else. And we shot, someone had got around it, a loophole where it was, it was a Kama Sutra, so it was informational. And during the penetration, I had never seen the footage from what I was told, what they do is they, they kind of, they draw where the penetration's happening. So you don't physically see the penetration, but because it's informational, informational. So we're actually having sex, but it's it's like a, I don't know if you want to call it a cartoon-ish type drawing over it, so you don't, but that's that was the closest thing. Anyways, this company had spent a lot of money, flew us down there, put us up. It was shot on film. In what, co what country? It was, it was, no, the theme, it was England, but the theme was Indian. Okay. The sets were huge, they were, shoot, they were shooting on film. It was like, it was, really? they were there for like three, 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 at least three days. It was me and her, I mean, they had, I mean, the sets were wow. like a full on, a full on regular movie set. It was, they had jibs and, I mean, they were shooting film, they were going through film like crazy. Wow. They had a lot of money. They paid us like, I think it was like 1500 a day. Wow. And back then it was good money. That's crazy money. But she was, I mean, she was nuts. Really? Why? What happened? I don't know. She was just, and she had a friend with a guy, friend with her, um, just an assistant guy or whatever. But it was, she was just, she was just nutty. She was a little nutty back then. You know, she was trying, he was trying to do her music and stuff. And she'd wake up in the morning, come to the door, I'd wake her up. And she, her, you know, she shaved her eyebrows so she didn't have them penciled in. And she had jet black hair and she just... <laughs> <laughs> in the morning, she was a little creepy. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I just remember, it just came to my head, Madison, yeah. because I did yeah, some you like, first back. scenes that's, a, that's another memory I'd forgotten about. What? That's yeah. another memory. Like, there's some girls here and there that we, I totally yeah. forgot about. It's crazy, though. Creepy. You just took me back, and that was, I'd forgotten about do, doing that job. Yeah, that's a great job, man. Yeah. See, you got a lot of love, probably. You got some extra love. I, I was a new kid on the block at the time, so, if, you know, you know, it's like fresh meat. You know what I mean? Oh, it's a new guy. I had to Mr. grind my man. way. I had to grab my way in. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. So anyway, so... I lucked out. I kind of didn't... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I lucked out. Yeah. So you're... You do this scene for Ron Vogel with mm. some unknown girl. Yeah, it was on the same soundstage that he had for years in the back of his house. That same... Right, same over there uh, in Canoga Park. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, totally. I mean, he sold that studio to Russ later. Or a sound like that. I, I thought. Know. You know, I shot that. Track tech. Yeah. yeah, track tech. Was it track tech? Yeah, he had track tech. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. Before. Oh no, no, I know, I, I know, he had track tech. Yes, yes. But yes. before your time, mm. he had a little studio in Chatsworth, like in a strip mall, in a strip little like yeah. area. Yeah. And we used to go there and shoot just like three or four bays yeah, of yeah, studios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But really, you know, really. I loved him, man. He was a grumpy old fart, but I liked him. He was nice. I liked. Yeah. Him. I never seen him as UK. grumpy. He well. He would get impatient. If he didn't start going his way, he would get grumpy. And maybe it was kind of the latter half of the day or something else. He would just get a little grumpy. And his daughter? Yeah. She just passed yeah, away? I know. I, I saw that. Huh. I saw that. Yeah. So she, was, she had pretty red hair. And, yeah. But yeah, yeah Robert was cool. I, I had good When did he pass away? away? He just slipped away and I didn't even know. I, but I know he's gone. Yeah. I mean, there's no way he's still around. There's no way. I mean, that guy looked like he was in death door 20 years ago. <laughs> well, he's sleeping he's on anyone the could sleep sitting up. I mean, yeah. oh, well, uh, Jeremy's the same way, though. <laughs> there's yeah. so many pictures of people whipping their dicks out by his face when his mouth's open. Oh. Uh, sleeping. We used to be in a truck shop and the truck drivers fall asleep. Mm. We used to take a hot dog in the mouth <laughs> our pants and take the pictures in the 80s. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. so... DJ Holland's there watching, was she looking at you? She wasn't watching, no. Oh, they, okay. I just remember they were the scene before me, so I, I watched their scene before, so it was the first time I was on that, actually, that set watching, and I knew who they were. Yeah. So it was kind of cool. No, John Doe was um pretty popular I guy. I had John, man. He was a sweetheart. Yeah. It's a shame, man. It's a yeah. shame. We parachuted one time over there in San Diego. Yeah. We uh, pre-falled at 13.5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've jumped, too. Yeah? Yeah. My I, first... My first... Free fall? Yeah, my first July 4th, I jumped out with six other people. That was a static line, but yeah. I, I dumped three, four after that. 13, five, 14, five, so? Uh, we, actually, we actually opened the chutes. We did another thing, too. It was crazy. And they, we, would, we weren't jumping ram air. We were jumping the round military ones. You could just go left or right, and it would rotate. 
So when you hit, you got to, you, when you landed, you had to land like a tuck and roll, and it was in a plowed field. I mean, eventually I jumped the Ram Air once, but we popped the chute open, it was, but these were Ram Air, we popped the chute open at uh, 10,000 10, feet. <laughs> That's too much. That's too early. No, 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 no. Oh, because special parachute. You're saying? No, no, no. You can open them. That and it just takes you longer to get down. Yeah. But that's when you can just spiral and crank. Oh, and have fun. And just. Oh, I see. Just really go for it. Okay. Yeah. Done tandems, going out backwards, doing flips. So you've done it a little bit, a few yeah, times. Yeah. yeah. So you like about it. 12, 12 jumps, fifteen jumps. Okay. Yeah. My buddy used to go up with. Do uh, you ever see this? Do you ever see the Superman movie? The old Christopher Reeve Superman movie, where it had uh, there was a character called Nuclear Man. That was my old roommate. He was in that. But we, he used to have his own chute. We would drive to Lancaster, and he would wear his parachute on the back of my motorcycle. And we were with no helmets, driving to Lancaster, and I got, a t I got pulled over for doing 140 miles an hour, and he was in the back wearing a parachute. <laughs> you mean the parachute would fly out? No, 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 no. We were driving to the, the, to the, to uh -huh. the, uh, to the drop zone, to the parachute place. Mm -hmm. But we were driving there on my motorcycle, and he had his parachute with him because he would pack his own chute. He had his own chute. Right. So on the motorcycle, he's going to wear it. Where's he going to carry it? So okay. he's got his parachute oh, strapped to him okay. behind me, driving. Okay. Oh, look, so <laughs> and you got in trouble for that? Well, no, the cop pulled me out. I was doing 140 miles oh, an hour. Oh, shit, yeah. And he's like going, you guys are bonkers wearing a parachute on a motorcycle going that fast. Yeah, because... Uh, yeah, if it popped up, you would have lost him. Maybe, <laughs> boink. Crazy. Did get, you think go to jail for that? No. You let me you're off. You're a nice guy. The cops would be like, hey, you're yeah, right. He goes, just park it here. Nice accent. Yeah. Uh, I went back later at the night and grabbed it. All uh, right. So, well, he didn't get me for doing 140. He was going the other way, oh, but okay. still, yeah. So your um, your first scene went well. Yeah, went I mean, very well. You pop on time and yeah, all that. Yeah, everything you wanted. Really? Yeah. And so then, how the second scene? Do you remember I that? I don't. Time? You know, I, I uh, everything happened so quick after that. It was yeah. literally once I got started, it was like it was it was almost too much. It was almost working too much. I was like, it was overwhelming. I was like, oh my, because didn't new face, new kid on the block. It was just like, I, it was too much. It was like, really? yeah, I mean, I remember the first couple months and then I was just like, I don't know, I think I worked like 32 days straight and I was firing blanks and half of those were doubles. I mean, I literally, I would nut and then the camera guy is like, like, dude, it felt like I did. It was just like, <laughs> nothing came out. So yeah, I, I think I remember you weren't very good with those pops. Right? No, no, mainly it was no. I mainly I was jack. I jack off the pop. No, I mean the, um, not big loads right coming out. That's right. Well, I, I mean you work a lot. You kind of yeah. get depleted. I mean no one's Peter. No one's Peter. No. I mean he's genetically made. People are like go. He must take something. I'm like he's just uh, a genetic. freak. He's an X man. Yeah, he's a genetic freak. He's literally gear for that job. Yeah, he he laughed. He did. He used to laugh at himself. Yeah. He would come uh, and he would laugh at himself uh, every time. We'd sit there, me and him, hundreds of scenes, well, was, side by side. Well, that's the thing. They would go, who wants to come first? Like, me. Because he's going to hit you. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to bounce off and hit you or something. I'm like, I come first. Sometimes I used to go seven, eight foot, mm. one or two squares. Yeah. So I said, Al, if you mess with me, uh, said, I'm, I'm going to get you. I'm a dribbler, dude. I, I, yeah. I, I play that kind. So you just worked so much. You didn't, did you enjoy it? or was it Oh, just... no, I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, but it was just, it was just, it was overload. It was just, too, you know, it, it was just, you just get saturated. It's like, holy shit, you know what I mean? And I just needed to take a couple of weeks off after the first yeah. you know, couple of months because it was just too much. Oh. I mean, it's like you feel like you're just getting tugged, but you know, and all over the place. So. Well, that's great though. I mean, kind oh, of. Yeah, it's great. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. Yeah. But it was just, when everyone's tugging at you that much in the beginning, it was just like, I, it was just crazy. Who did you like working for the most? I remember I worked for Spinelli a lot. He had me locked in at the at the uh, at Track Tech, yeah. twelve hour days because you know usually the first guy or the second guy had wood problems. So you know and then, you know you doing you always I was always end up being lost up. I lived in uh, in in, in uh, at the time I lived in Brentwood. So I drive back over the hill and then have to be back on set again in the morning and that every day was just stupid. You know, you know the five day wonder scenes, you know, five mm -hmm. scenes in one day and then it'd be another movie and he'd have his stopwatch for each position. You remember that? Uh, so okay. that was that. Um, but he was a big bulk of my work in the beginning uh, that was, and that was just crazy. You would pay like 200 bucks a scene or something like that? No, I was getting three. Uh, it was cash in the envelope back in the day. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and he wanted to pay me five for two scenes. I was like, no, 
uh, two scenes, it's uh, six. I, I, I didn't can fucking screw you. Really? Yeah, wow. and the second scene's technically harder than the first one. Why would I, why would I give you a break? I always stuck with that. I always really? did. Wow. Yeah. Unless I really knew the person, I would give them a break, but no. no. Really? Well, for me, I mean, yeah. just get it warmed up. Yeah. For the second scene. No, no, I mean, like, I, I, for me, it, I think just in the beginning, I was working a lot. And I just was like, no, if you want to get two out of me, then I'm just going to double the money. Uh -huh. I mean, how does it feel? I mean, do you ever think about this at that point in time? That here you are, you know, probably seven or eight years earlier, mm -hmm. right? Lonely, probably depressed, you know? Um, yeah, before you got, you know, before you um, became somebody, you had no friends. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, then, and yeah. then you come in here, you get all that sex, and now you're in the adult business, and everybody loves you, and you're getting all this attention and money and yeah. and action. Yeah. I mean, how did, did you ever look back and say, son of a bitch, things the gods have blessed me? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, through a lot of alcohol and drugs and medication, <laughs> I mean, not medication, medicating with those things. Yeah, I mean, it was, it's, and a lot of times I used to think, why, why me? You know, because it's like the way things happen, the way it turned out, it just, you, you can't write that in a script. It's just mind-boggling. It's just crazy. It's like a Western, like I told you, like the Lewis the more Western. Yeah. Dyer Marshall. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was, uh, it was, it, yeah, I look back, and it's always the fact that when you look back on life, you just go, wow. You know, it's always after the fact you look back, you go, I can't believe that happened, obviously, because you survived it somewhere. But it's, it's crazy. It's, it's. It'll, you know, it'll make a good book one day. Yeah, yeah it's a, a good story. <laughs> I mean, it's, but I mean, you just you're drenched with so much love and mm. uh, attention. Yeah. So you just you can't handle it, really. It was it was overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, plus you know, I was a lot of times I was uh, I was like um, I was. I mean, I was screwing around off camera too with all the girls. Remember, I was tapped with the cash. Oh yeah, she's beautiful. French, French yeah. Vietnamese girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Deborah Wells. Deborah Wells. Deborah Wells. Deborah Wells. She was tall, tall, tall Hungarian. Brunette. Yeah, her and her and um, and uh, and uh, um, Flor um, Florence. I'm actually friends with her still. Um, Beatrice Val. Beatrice Val. She was another French girl. She used to hang out with. Uh, uh, yeah, I remember her. Yeah, I used to go to Europe a lot and shoot. Uh -huh. That was. Good money at back then. It was, a it was a thousand a day, one scene, two scenes, or no scene, cash for two weeks. And they wouldn't show it on Sundays. These were Italian companies. Really? These Italian companies. Who was it? What's the guy's name? It was with um, Joe D'Amato. Uh -huh. And uh, um, who's the other guy? Joe D'Amato, I used to work with a lot. But yeah, one scene, two scenes, or no scenes, they pay you. Sundays was church, so they, they still pay you. Wow. Two That's weeks. Like, so $10,000 or 14 grand? 14 grand for you know, cash. I used to come back with the stuff in my cowboy boots. That was beautiful. Yeah. How, how happy were you? Great. How were those trips? Great. And they put us up, you know, we'd stay outside of Rome and they put everyone up in the same you know, little motel and then we'd shoot in like a six, seven hundred year old castle and stuff, period pieces. Beautiful, huh? It was pretty cool. Getting loaded every night. I would drink a bottle of grappa with, with Joe D'Amato, and then he would drive home two hours to Rome, and then he'd be back on set in the morning. We'd split a bottle of grappa like it was nothing. So he'd be drunk or no? He, yeah, he was an old boozer, man. Uh -huh. He was fine. All right. Yeah. You know, I was there, actually, I was there on that trip with, uh, was that with Sean? I was with Sean Michaels on yeah. that trip. That was about 91, 92? Yeah. No, it was probably mid, mid, I'd already had a bit of a name, so maybe mid. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. They were supposed to, I was supposed to go to Italy, but then yeah. they weren't working with Jim, you know what I mean? So uh -huh. I always backed Jim up. Yeah. But um, yeah. there's this one girl mm. that was so sexy, mm. right? She was all over you on one of these sets, probably like 96, 95. She was a French black girl named Julia, right? Julia. Mm. Oh, the fattest vagina yeah, in the world. I don't remember that, but I remember Julia. Wow, that's another name. And Chanel, too. Chanel Preston. No, no, that's another. No, that's yeah. not. No, Julia, yeah. Julia. Yeah. She was cute. Uh -huh. How was she? Great. She I worked with her a number, no, number of times. Yeah, she was, she was fun. Yeah I, yeah, I didn't get to work with her. Yeah. God damn it. Hey, there's a lot of girls you work with I didn't get to work with, uh, too, so. 
Can't get no. everyone. No, but she was one of the ones that I thought. Because she was. She's up your alley. I, know, I know you. She's up yeah. your alley. Nice no, <laughs> But um, yeah. yeah. You know. But um, so you were working thirty days a month. I know, no, no. I had some runs where it was like, yeah, I had to take. I, I'm like, I can't, I can't, because I, I was always booked a, a minimum a month plus ahead. Wow. I was always. I had my my file facts as we used to call them back then and uh -huh. calendar and write it in I was always booked at least a month in advance that's amazing yeah it was and I never had an agent I never really you did never, I no towards the latter half I kind of went with um, Ben English yeah I went with him briefly towards LA the direct. latter half yeah latter half and that kind of were like yeah. you know, I, said, I told him I said listen you get jobs outside of anyone I've already worked with it's yours uh -huh. you start tapping into people like I was working for kink.com up in San Francisco and stuff uh -huh. I'm like you can't my regulars you're not getting any money from them you book me in anything outside of that that's yours that way he's yet to work a little harder mm -hmm. you know what I mean then he said okay he agreed to that so I just figured I'd try to mix it up a little bit you know get some new get some new people that I didn't work with before but why did you go with Jim I didn't need to <laughs> I didn't, I really didn't need to. Okay. I mean, it did, literally from day one, it was bam. I didn't, I didn't need to go. And it's, you know what it's like in the industry, it's word of mouth. You know, if yeah, you do a decent job, times. if the, if the best compliment is you, the girls request you. If the girls request you, then you know you're doing a good job. And it just, it just kept going like that. Oh, as long right. as you're reliable, dependable, and respectful, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you're so, a very nice person. So the yeah. girls were, were requesting you a lot, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is the best compliment you can have. Who are some of your favorite girls? You know what? I mean... Uh, you ever work with Savannah? You miss her? No, I never did. I was on set with her enough times when she would walk off because she didn't, she wouldn't need you to go to do a concert because they were running over time. And she was, uh -huh. I don't know, she was dating some musician at the time. A lot of them, okay. Yeah, she was, I mean, she walked off a couple times on the set. I'm like, the director's like, you still got to do your sex scene. She's like, oh, I, it's 7 o'clock, i got to be in Hollywood. I mean, it's something like that. It was, PT, probably. Yeah. Right, she's... <laughs> but she was pretty. Yeah. What did you think? She was pretty? Ashton Gear is another one of my favorites. Oh, yeah? Well, that's ironic you say that, because... Yeah. Look at that. That's an old picture right there. I haven't got my glasses on, but I can Ashton still... Gear. Yeah. I actually Fantasy worked, I actually worked for the... I actually worked for the, the latter half of her career, actually. Yeah, yeah she was really... Really, you know, mm -hmm. really excited about yeah. the business. I mean, she's really like a strong performer. Yeah. People like, she's a nice person yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. So what about, who else? I mean, do you remember those days? I Should mean, I... if any of you goes watching, I apologize now if I can't remember you because, I've, I mean. Let me bring up a girl's name. All right. Sierra. Yes. I thought she was one of the best. Yeah. She was so passionate. Mm -hmm. She was so nice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What about Janet Jackman? Yeah. Uh, I've just another one, Celeste. Celeste, I never worked with You never worked with Celeste? Uh -huh. Oof. Didn't she have Woody Long? Was that the girl with Woody yeah. Long? Yeah, yeah. They stopped, you know, sometimes the girl would, would stop me because I was banging them too hard yeah. or something. Yeah, see, that's the thing. A lot of times the girls were with a guy, the guys were like going, okay, you can work with her because I, I respect you. Right. All right. Uh, Woody Long was... a too. Yeah, yeah, Woody Long was, that was a... He was a nice guy, you know? I like him. Yeah. No? Bit of a nut job. Yeah? Yeah. Behind closed Did you know him behind closed no. doors? Yeah. He was a bit what of happened? a nut job. Yeah. Drug, drug guy? Yeah. Do you know how he died, right? He fell down? Yeah. He fell he down was, some stairs. He was... Based out of his mind. Yeah. Yeah. No, he had a serious alcohol and drug problem. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, really bad. How about this girl that slipped my... I haven't got my glasses on. Raquel Darian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you work with her? I don't think so. Her boyfriend will let me work with her. Yeah. Well, yeah. He was a... He's an idiot. Dick. Say, say it again. Dick. I would say he's a double dick. Yeah, Fuck yeah. Well, it's being, you know. You're being nice? He's being PG right now. Right? All right, excuse me for that. <laughs> I don't like him at all. No. You know, th there was a couple times when the opportunity presented when we could have fought. Yeah. And I really... You would have killed him. Well, he thinks he, you know what I mean? I know you. You would have killed him. People don't know. I, had a, I have well, some fair skills. Yeah. But yeah, um, anyway, you're right, he's a dick. But yeah. she was so pretty. Mm -hmm. She was unbelievable. Yeah. Body, face, yeah. and a bit a fat woman. Yeah, I mean, she was great. I, you know what? Maybe I didn't work with her. Maybe I did. I was, you probably uh, did. I can't remember. I'd say, but I was on the set with them both a lot enough. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he tried to get work. He was a epitome of the suitcase pimp. He was lame. He would try to get work. Let's see what a dorky looking dude. Mm -hmm. What about Jenna? Jenna Jameson. Yeah. 
Yeah, she was great. How many times did you work with her? Uh, I lost count. I was the best man at her wedding, her first wedding with Brad. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. And then I saw her years after that, and I went to say hi to her at, 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 in Vegas at the AVNs, and she was like... Really? I'm like, seriously? Seriously? No. Yeah, I was one of like maybe a handful of guys that she was on her list. I was the best oh. man at that wedding. Yeah. Really? Totally snubbed me. Like... Oh, yeah. Why? Her, she just went to her head, man. She just crossed that line. Plus, she was this when she was doing a lot of drugs at the time, too. Really? Yeah, she was She was into pills. or She, she was, put it this way, she was a toothpick. Like, drugged out toothpick. Well, what, what, what year was that, you think? I don't remember. Huh, okay. I don't huh. remember. I mean, I only have... I good... think she was out of the business, but oh, she was okay. still around it. Uh-huh. Okay. You know? Oh, right, right, right. But no, I loved, I loved working with her. She was she a sweetheart. Was In the very beginning, Randy West is the one that kind of found her. Yeah? Yeah. He how's he, do you know, how, how he's doing? I don't know. I like to talk to him. I love him. He's in Vegas. I know that. Yeah. He, you know, um, I liked him. He was cool. You know, Randy said one time, he, he pinpointed, he goes, you know what? 5,000 guys wish they can, only five can do yeah. the job in the industry. Oh, yeah. And Before Viagra. Before Viagra. Right. Yeah. But Randy was a very, you know, cool guy. Yeah, I like Randy. One of the yeah. original guys. Yeah. One of the OGs. Yeah. He had yeah. a good uh, look for the movies. I like him. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um... How about... With his blonde mullet. <laughs> blonde curly mullet. <laughs> yeah. well, mullets were kind of the thing back in the year, you know. Yeah, but I, I thought Jenna was real good. But yeah, she was great. I, yeah. I was pretty good friends with her. Yeah. I mean, but, um... Yeah, no, I, mean, I love her to death, but yeah. it was just that she, it was just, oh, got she got to a point where it kind of just... She became Jenna. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. She became the yeah. the image and not... And it goes to your head a little bit. But, I mean, she, dude, she hit it so quick, though. I mean, oh, but, yeah. you know, but so, She's many, special, yeah. so many girls would go, oh, I want to be the next Jenna. Like, Jenna capped it. She put the cap on it, the nail, the coffin, the hammer, bang. Yeah, that, was, that was it. Because the internet was just yeah. just coming in. But, right, the, the time. The timing was everything. And her. Everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And her. It's a package. It's, but, a, it's a package deal. And Jay. Jay took her to the uh, yeah. too. No, Jay's smart as hell, my good yeah. friend, you know? Yeah. And, um,. I haven't talked to him in a long time, but of yeah. course, he was smart as hell. Yeah. And he, he saw what could be done. Oh, yeah. He, no, he, he, was, he, he took her, she was already going somewhere, but he took her to the next yeah. level, to that, to the, to that stand, to right, that. Right, like, I don't think Steve could have taken her there. You know, Steve and Yeah, Wicked. yeah, yeah, yeah. They could, I don't think Wicked was taking her there, but yeah. Jay Well, saw, Jay, Jay saw the future. In that, yeah, he yeah. said he was great. The marketing Great side vision, of great yeah. vision. Yeah. But um, who was another girl that was great, you know, that you can't remember anymore? Shyla Fox I yeah. loved. Maybe she actually remember her. Shyla Fox. Shyla Fox. Yeah, she was another one of my big, big favorites. Who would she look like? Bit. Brunette, Buxom. Yeah, I don't think I work with um, Yeah, I think I don't know who you're talking about. I see slip by. I was kind of... Uh, probably slipping that, away yeah, slowly. Yeah, well, yeah. By nine, no, really, no. 97, I started producing more than by 98. Yeah, no, I, I, but she was, yeah. I mean, she was, she was uh, mid-90s. Like she was mid, No, she was mid-90s. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, may have worked yeah. with her. <clears throat> yeah, there's some good it's girls. There's so many, man. I mean, it's like I said, I've, I've really fried some brain cells over the years. I really have. Like, my memory's actually gotten bad. Yeah. Well, I've actually gone for some testing because it's not oh, good. Really? Oh, yeah, it's wow. not good. A lot of girls. But a lot, it's hard no, to No, but damage, as far as damage, though. Yeah? Yeah, I've done some damage. So, who are some of your favorite directors? Oh, John Leslie, for sure. John Leslie? John Leslie was right up there. Um, PT was good. I used to love watching PT watch a scene. He would just get, he would just sit there. He, you, you, yeah. he would sit there, kind of really weird. He'd do this thing with his hand. He would just, <laughs> he would get so into it. He would just watch and just do this weird thing. He yeah. would just rock though too. It was really strange. He was a, a rock, you said? No, he would rock. He would sit rock. there okay, and he would it. just or stand there, but he would do something with his oh. hands. He was just like, what? He was probably like, high. Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, would have, I was going to go there with that one too. Knowing him, yes, probably. But I mean, when he was on a set, well, of course, directly. It was fun. It was fun sets. So, I mean, he, he, he was easy to, yeah. to work. Yeah, oh, he was great. No pressure. Well, the thing is, though, he knew how it worked. He hired the right people. He could just yeah. sit back and let them do their job. You know what I mean? This whole thing's on the casting. If they do the casting where the budget is, we got to get this girl, but we'll only pay for a, a, a C guy, but we got an A plus girl, because that's the budget. I mean, you're not gonna get. You gotta. Yeah. You, know, you gotta think like John Leslie will go. Who do you want to work with? To me, because uh -huh. he goes. And then he was the only person I ever knew that would do a cold reading of dialogue a day or two before the movie's ever gonna be around. Before it, just to see how you connect with you with the really? with the girl. I've never known. You know anybody ever did that? Patty Rose did that. Okay, I can see that. 
Yeah. Not for me, but you know, yeah. she did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, she did it for me once. Yeah. But then, you know, Joel Lawrence got the job because he didn't get his dick hard. Yeah, well, this was in 1990. Yeah. Anyways, I got a very good memory. Yeah. But um, what about Joe Kelly? Joe Kelly? Yeah. I was, I was another one of my favorites, too. I worked with her a lot. Yeah, Jill. Karina Collins. Huh? Karina Collins. Yes. I'm still friends with her, actually. She's great. Yeah. 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 She has good stuff. Yeah. She was yeah, nasty. Karina was good. She's a naughty girl. Yeah. You're good with the names. You keep throwing them out there, and that'll jog my memory. Oh, there was this one girl, you probably don't remember her name, Felice Traub. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. She was it great. doesn't ring a bell. She, Jamie Summers? Yep. You work with her? Yep. Oh, she was cute, huh? Yeah. She was, I was a big fan of hers before I got into business. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. She was good. You liked it? I remember the name. I remember working with her. I don't remember mm -hmm. the actual acts. Ah, uh, so... What other directors? Is that the end of the director? What about uh, Alex Dorenzi? What about Henry Bouchard? What yeah, I mean, they, um, Greg Dark was a Greg really Dark. loony tune. I don't know about he was, yeah, <laughs> I think I was in the set with you. I was in the set with you, and they, they were going to put you in a dress, and you're like, screw that. Really? And I'm like, screw it, I'll wear it. But it, was, it, but it, was, it, was, it wasn't my size, you know, cutting back out of it. We had bird cages on our heads. And, Shooting in a meat. He was just. He was just. His, his vision was just really strange. He had me a lampshade one time. Yeah. So that turned me on. Yeah. It was just. I mean, visually, it was no one else doing that. But he was. But the, the, set, the scenes were going for hours, hours, yeah. And yeah. hours, and hours. Yeah. It didn't bother me. Yeah. It was just. You know. Patricia Kennedy. Yeah, Never I'm heard. friends with her on Facebook. Oh, yeah. yeah, she writes a Holly just like mine. Oh, yeah? yeah. Well, that's Yeah, fine. she's a hairdresser out there, uh, Ohio, but she really wants to come back. But, yeah. I never oh. worked with her. I've always oh, been friends with okay. her. She was really good friends with Madison. Yeah, exactly. They were tag, yeah, they were they tag were bookends, yeah. Right. Yeah. Was it Shyla? Shyla Fox, I said. No, Shyla the Blonde Scott. You know? Oh, Shyla Bell. Shyla, Shyla, yeah. Shyla, yeah, Shyla yeah, she just friended me on Facebook not long ago. Yeah, she's cool. Yeah. <laughs> she had that voice. <laughs> like Canadian or something? Yeah, no, and she had that, that laugh. Was <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. It's really weird. She was cool. Yeah. So um, tell me about your venture into the world of dark drugs. Dark drugs? Or drugs. Uh, why? Why? Because <clears throat> I'd, I was a, I'd been a fitness model for so many years, and I was such a goody two-shoes. I would eat super strict. I wouldn't even have a diet soda because it had 35 milligrams of sodium in it. I was just so, you know, I was just so by the book, you know what I mean? And ecstasy I tried, and then that kind of was the catalyst. And then I never really touched weed. I mean, the only thing growing up when the kids were around my, my school when I was there was they were sniffing glue or they were sniffing gasoline. Uh -huh. They'd go to the parking lot back in the day where you could just shove a rag in the, you know, when you uh -huh. pump the gas in, and you just, you know, you shove a rag in there. And just, yeah, that's what the kids were doing at my school. So uh -huh. I never heard of cocaine or weed until I moved to Canada. Really? Never heard of it. So I was oblivious to that growing up. So, um, yeah. grow uh, cocaine, I started doing when I used to go to the ABN. Uh, I used to have some friends that lived there, but I was like, screw it. I was just, you know, let me just try it. When was the first time you tried it, you think? 92, 93, 94? Probably 92. I think it was 27. 92? Something like that. Oh, yeah. so right after you get in the business? Yeah, within a year. I just said, screw it. I'm getting, I'm going for it. Really? Yeah. You I had was a just, line out? No, I remember specifically, it was, uh, it was one of the nights during the AVNs, during the convention or whatever, and I was with a body of mine that used to live there with another body of mine that I partied with years prior, but they always did a lot of drugs. I would just do the ecstasy, and he had coke, and we were parking the car, and I go, give me a bump. He was doing one before we go in, and I did a bump real quick, and he goes, oh, geez, someone pulled up behind us, so the lights came on, so we just boom, boom, and walking into the club and some... A regular life, not the police. No, no, keep up. No, 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 it wasn't right. clear. Yeah, so we walk into the club and I'll never forget this girl walks up and knew me. She goes, come here, Mark. She wipes my nose. I coke <laughs> all over my nose. The first time I ever did, I'm like, oh, great. Uh -huh. Didn't really feel it. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, need some more. No, and he's like, and yeah. then I, uh, yeah. And then I really couldn't, it, I was up for like, I mean, it's all it took to get me, I was up for hours, like, you know, a 24 hour run, I was up for a little bit. It didn't, it, that, and then obviously your body gets used to it, and huh. then I was up to an eight ball a day. But did it stimulate you sexually? Yeah, it got me wound, yeah, it made me horny. It gets me, that's the weird thing, like a lot of code, you know, people get, you know, 
have to drink dick or cocaine. Cocaine dick's a big common one. Complete opposite. Made me horny. It wound me up. I mean, it. I could. I would do coke, as you know. Obviously, it would keep you up longer, so you could fuck longer on it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I would always. Yeah, I would always. Uh, yeah, I got to a point where I get a gram to go out with, and a couple grams, and an eight ball for me, and a gram for a handout for the girls. If the girls finish that, I, I'm done. But I have my rest of my eight ball in my pocket. You know what I mean? I, I was bad. I was. It was quite an addiction I got, and in total denial. You know what I mean? I mean, I knew I had a problem with it, but to actually that label addict. You know what I mean? You kind of don't want to accept that. But how long did it take you before you started getting? You know. At that level, you said um, eight ball to eight balls. It, Well, the point was it got to a point where I wasn't showing up for work. I wasn't, first of all, I wouldn't call in. And this is kind of, texting kind of wasn't the kind of a thing at the time. No, yeah, no, oh, okay. Yeah. But texting had just come. Yeah, yeah. 2001 right, or right, two right, or something. Right, right, right. So it kind of wasn't, you know what I mean? It wasn't something something where they could text you back. Right, for people who don't know that, texting <laughs> didn't happen. It was, you know, true, it was... Well, we're, dude, it, we're, we're pre-internet we're pre, uh, and pre-cell phone, right, dude. Right, right. <laughs> 2001, no, 2001, 2002, yeah. I saw it happen in the Philippines. Yeah. But it wasn't happening in America. Yeah. So it must have been 2003, 2004 yeah, when it started like coming. That. Yeah, and that's when you had three letters that you have to try and figure out. Yeah. That's really even for more fun when you're dyslexic and you have to have text on the three letters on a key. Um, <laughs> but yeah so i wouldn't show up and then and then, and then people still so you wouldn't show up to work i would show up what was your best excuse for not showing up uh i can't remember what they were i ran out of excuses because one of the last ones i used was my father passed away which is terrible because he was still alive yeah that's you know i mean that's just one of the worst ones you can i mean but you had to outdo your story from the next one you got to you know what i mean so they just started getting more creative and more I'm surprised that, that you really started going down. A, oh, I was. Oh, I guess worse. I'll, I'll go to that part if you want. But yeah, uh, let's go. but I wouldn't. Yeah, I wasn't showing up. And they would still. I remember one shoot. There was this girl's first annual hustle over there. It was a big publicity thing. It was going to be a big deal. I didn't. And I, I, you know, of course, I was fine up until the night before I decided to get loaded. I'd done that so many times. Jeopardize it before the next day. Yeah. Why couldn't I just wait 24 hours and do it afterwards and celebrate? I didn't show up, so they scheduled it for the following week. I did it again. Wow. And people kept hiring me still, so I'm like, I keep doing it. And then I eventually ended up getting blackboard for about six months. For, really? I, I was, it seemed like it was that long. Uh, yeah, and then I had to kind of work my way back in, and I got myself sober on my own for six months. And I just, I didn't go to meetings, I didn't have any, I just, I did a cold turkey, I just, you know went mm -hmm. dry and did it myself but you know on the six month day I said someone pissed me off and I went and drank and got drugs and then was up and running again but I would get to the point and this is something that no one knows about just a few very few people I was get I got to a point where I was so depressed I would actually work and then I would go home if I was off for four or five days or whatever I would get loaded I wouldn't come out of my room I would sit in the dark I would get so depressed and down, I would have food delivered, drugs delivered, alcohol delivered, and then I had to go to work the next day. I'd give myself a four-hour window to kind of clean up, shave, shower, whatever, go to work, put on a face, hey, Mark Davis, come here. Do the scene, do two scenes or whatever, go home, do it again. And I did that for months, where I would just go hide, go hide, and I would go to work and put on a face and be that guy and go home. And then I OD'd intentionally uh, twice. <laughs> to try and shut my head up because I was in such a horrible place. And I still didn't know how to ask for help. I still wouldn't ask for help. How'd you OD? Too much? Were you, how, were you smoking I it or snorting it? 30, I took 30 Xanax bars. Whoa. I took uh, about two cups that size of 100 proof vodka with a couple grams of coke. Wow. I remember I said I had a high tolerance, right? So mm -hmm. I took it all and I called my friend and said, I, 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 I fucked up. I said, I messed up. And, uh, and I told them what I did, and they called the ambulance, the ambulance came and got me, and I was, I was still coherent when they got there, they were like, you know, and then they took me to the emergency room, they couldn't stomach pump my stomach because I'd already ingested everything, so they gave me just, just charcoal. Charcoal, yeah, yeah. I know about that. And then uh, they took me to uh, 5150, which was a 72 hour hold. Crazy. You know, which is basically, for anyone of you who don't know, if you've ever watched one through the cuckoo's nest, it's pretty much the same deal. Crazy people. Uh, some people end up never getting out, oh. ever. Yeah. And it's, you know, and then my girlfriend picks me up 
and we go straight to my old watering hole bar from there with no shoelaces, no cords and no belts because they kept it all. This is about four in the afternoon. They wanted to keep me in there longer, but I said, listen, I, already, I messed up. I said, I, you know, I called a friend right afterwards. I said, you keep me in here longer, it's gonna, I'm gonna go more crazy. She takes me straight to my old watering hole. I get loaded, and then my coat dealer comes in around six, where his usual time he rolls in, and I get loaded. You think I'd learn, right? From there, straight to the bar again. Well, is he that's, a... that's just, that's just wanting to shut your head up because you're not happy with who you are. That's what it came down to. But, but you, what I'm trying to figure out is you really didn't want to die. I wanted to shut my head up. I wasn't happy with myself. It was, I mean, depression's a horrible thing. I mean, mm -hmm. there's different forms of it. People go, you know, with some, some are self, uh, um, self um, inflicted. As far as you know, like with me, I mean, I was, I mean, uh, I already had it within me, I think, but just with the alcohol and the drugs, and over a certain period of time, it just manifests, and and then, and then I was jeopardizing my career. That's a big part of it too. I had built up something, and I accomplished something, and I was throwing it all down the toilet, in doing it without any control. I knew I was doing it. I was. I knew I had to be at some big shoot the next day. I knew I was going to do it, but I had to go out and party, and I and I and I knew I wasn't going to show up, and I and yet I still did it. Day in, and I did it so many times. You know, you burn so many people when you start hating who you are. Depression is a horrible thing, man. And then, and then putting on the face and fucking, and then you know, this is this is pre Viagra, so I'm putting on a face from being on four or five day benders, and no one has a clue when I walk onto a set and be Mark Davis. Oh, Viagra came in two thousand. Yeah. So this is. I never touched it. You never touched no. it. No, oh, because it, for me it would take away. I don't know. For me, it just it took away from our era. I knew, I mean, some, some I, I would always get a kick out of telling the director, I said, uh, after the scene, I would go, by the way, I haven't slept yet. And they go, you asshole. You know what I mean? Because like, I, I would always tell them afterwards, there's kind of like a pat on the back, I'm like, oh. I, yeah. I, I, you know, and they're like, dude, and they're like, well, and they're like oh, I didn't know. I would do that so many times, but you know, obviously then I wouldn't show up or this or that, but it was, uh, yeah, I didn't want to tell I mean, and sometimes when I would get mad at myself and I think I had a bad day, you know, on the set, you know, the director would go, dude, you at 75% is better than most of the guys. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we are, we don't, no one's bulletproof, you know what I mean? You pretty much are, but, you know, with what I was doing to myself and they're still functioning over all those many years, I mean, I'd seen scenes pop up over the years on TV and I, it would pan out and I'm like, uh -huh. that right? I have no recollection of even being on oh, that yeah. set. I love those. Zero. A lot of scenes. Yeah. But so, but yeah, and I and I did the same thing again. But three years later, I did the same dosage, same stuff. Made the phone call. I messed up. I still don't go get. Didn't get help. Yeah, you, know, you wouldn't think that would happen from a person like you. You mm -hmm. always were very, very responsible, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah. You know? yeah that's, there are times. That's right? the thing behind closed doors for people out there that have issues and problems that you're watching this. Get some help. Talk to people because mm -hmm. I never did. I. I was ashamed and I didn't know how to ask for help and a little bit of direction, who knows where I could have gone. It would have, I mean, the fact that I'm sitting here right now is, even the doctors in the emergency rooms before I went to uh, the 70, 70, uh, 5150 hold, they were dumbfounded, like, you shouldn't be alive right now. And, you know, that happened twice, oh. intentionally. But they were both cries for help. So. You, you, yeah, you didn't want to die, you just needed help. You wanted to... I wanted to shut my head up. Uh -huh. So dying was... Uh, uh. I, wanted, I wanted to die. Cry for help afterwards. I, could, I mean, I know people that have done half of that have died. So the intent was there. The phone call afterwards was like, oh, I messed up. So, but, so yeah, I mean, anyone, and I can't say this even more, so anyone that's watching out there, get some help if your head's in a, in a headspace where you don't know what to do because it, it can manifest and go down a really bad road. And uh, it's just like Robin Williams, you don't know. Yeah. People hide it because it's, it's just something they want to deal with themselves for whatever reasons, whatever they're going through, depression is a horrible place to go. And I probably had it in me already, and then you just factor everything else I threw on top of it. But you know, right. and then being on, you know, being right. on top of the world and being that guy, mm -hmm. and then you know having other issues, it just kind of spirals.
drugs yeah. make it. Oh, it did and magnify everything. Yeah. Everything. What kind of drugs were you using? And I'd already, and I'd already messed up two marriages on top of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Blew millions of dollars out of my nose while gambling. So, you know, that, there's some other things that factor oh, in. You're a gambler? <laughs> you're a gambler? Oh, I'm an addict. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm an addict. You throw drugs, well, women, and, like, and money. I mean, come on. So, I want to talk about that in a mm. second, but what drugs, I mean, cocaine you were taking? Were I would take... Starting it or smoking it? No, no, I never smoked it. No? No, I, I knew, I knew, I never shot heroin, I never smoked crack, or, or I did speed, I did a lot of meth. You smoked crack? No, never. Sure. I just knew, I knew myself, and I'd seen what it done to a lot of my friends. I buried a couple friends on it, I buried some oh, friends right. on heroin, so I just, for some reason, I had a, there was something that told me, knowing my dick to personality, not to go there. Oh, yeah. Which is probably a blessing in disguise. Oh, yeah, you can't go there? No. That's the end? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, because once I start, I can't stop shit. Sure. Even though I am sober today, so. Did you hang out with very many actors in your time? Yeah. Who? John Doe. <laughs> he smoked crack. Dear. Yeah, he would smoke crack, and I would do. Uh, I would do. We would do blow together and stuff. Uh -huh. You know. Um, uh, 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 was, um, Bob, Bobby Vitale. Uh, he smoked crack? <laughs> he, yeah, well, I, I hang out with all the crazy crazies. <laughs> I can say that with those two because, well, obviously one's not here. There were some other ones, I won't mention names, but yeah, there, were, there, was, there was a handful. I mean, a lot of people were doing this, a lot of drugs stuff back in the days. I mean, they were. I had Brianna in here the other day. Yeah, no, yeah, there you go. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, she's talking she, about... And she's alive today, God bless her, because she went through some stuff too. Oh, yeah. She was one of my favorite, getting back to names, she was one of my, one of my top. Unbelievable! Mm -hmm. I thought sexually yeah. she's unbelievable. Yeah. The the goods down there mm -hmm. for me is yeah. a plus. But she was a performer. She enjoyed what she did. She was great. Yeah. She was great. Look at this picture. Yeah. I need my glasses. Oh yeah, that's bar one. I know that shot. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a classic right there, man. You know who that is? Yeah, that's you. It's I mean I, I, I know the picture. It's uh, you and uh, and and Peter. Yeah. 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 This is uh, Mark's birthday. Yeah, bar one. Was I with Kitten then? No, I mean, I don't know for I sure. Maybe. Maybe. That I mean, I forgot. Back. Okay, so Ken's one of my top performers, too. I gotta say that. Oh, yeah? Thanks, wife. I never worked with <laughs> her. She slipped by me. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. But I have a. I'm still friends with her, too. I have a confession. There's not a confession, but I'll mm -hmm. tell you this one thing. Yeah. One time on the trip to Hawaii, yeah. right? Kobe yeah. was coming on to me pretty hard. Yeah. You know I actually mean? screwed around behind my back after I found out after the fact but, so many times. But. I had love for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I just turned my back and Thank you. ignored her. Even though she's a, a C, capital C. Is she? And then, and then, yeah, oh yeah, dude. So I found out stuff about her after, behind, after the fact. It's like, you yeah. know what? Yeah. I mean, who knows if I was an asshole too. I was doing drugs and everything so. else. But, but yeah. I was proud of myself because, you yeah, know, yeah, I, you know I, me, I'm an animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, she, uh, yeah, she was a piece of work that really? one. Really? Yeah. And you, I mean, I, I you, do. you never your know. friends behind your back? Yeah, yeah. All that bullshit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Quite yeah. a few. A handful. Yeah. yeah, I used to have Dominique Simone as a girlfriend. Yeah. You remember her? I was with her quite a few times myself. Right. And so yeah. she was my girlfriend. She burnt the apartment down. Yeah. She slit her wrist. Yeah. And she tried to have sex with all my friends. Yeah. Right? Behind my back. Yeah. I didn't appreciate that. Yeah, she was, uh, that's a crazy one, that one. Yeah. You took her home a couple times? No, I would go, I would never take her home now. I went to her <laughs> place. But a couple of times she was dating a guy, it was weird, because he would kind of always walk in, and I'm like, oh, okay, I gotta go now. Yeah, Some was... model guy she was dating, oh, yeah. blonde model guy, yeah. It was kind of a little, the setup was a little weird. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because I would always get high on coke, and she would always be on my way home. And it would usually be like 2, 2.30 in the morning. So, oh, yeah. so it was usually, a, it was always a booty call situation. Uh, she she smoked crack or something, right? She was, yeah. Or everything? Yeah. 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 I didn't. I never seen her do it in front of me. I never I saw her do stores. it. I never oh, saw her really? do it, but I could tell. I mean, come on. It was a little obvious. You call into someone at 2.33 in the morning, uh -huh. and they're wide awake. You know, from a pay phone, because there was no cell phones back then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your gambling. You have a gambling problem? No, no, I don't anymore because I don't gamble. You had a gambling problem? I had, yeah. I used to go to Vegas twice a month. Twice a month. Uh, my friend's family used to own the Tropicana Hotel. Wow. Used to because they kind of got booted off because, the, you know, the last name, I'm not going to say the name, but it's an Italian name. So let's just say they were old school oh, Vegas. Right? So they okay. kind of lost their license and went to grab oh, some um, other hotels on the ship, you know, kind of motels. But yeah, so he was a couple years older than me. So I was hanging out with him in Vegas since I was... 
18, 19, so when I first came in. So I was dialed in, and everywhere he went, it was red carpet. He was a, uh, you know, he liked his drugs too. So what's not like to love, you know? You started gambling and pouring money away? Yeah, oh well, yeah, yeah. How, what? Paycheck to paycheck for quite a while. I what? dropped 10, 20 grand a time. Really? Wow, what was your favorite game? Blackjack. I'd win sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what kept you going. Uh -huh. But you know, most of the time, you're like trying to get it back. You think? Well, I would win, you know, quite a few grand, and then I go, okay, just one more hand. And you're coked out, little cocaine too. Yeah. Yeah. But this cocaine was great for sex. You said it before. I stimulated. Was it great for sex? Oh yeah, it's great. Great. Yeah. But, it, but you said ecstasy was better. It's a different kind of buzz. Okay. It's a different kind of buzz. You love your dub your own ecstasy. Uh -huh. You just kind of like, just like, hey, I want to love you. And okay. my buddies, they'd be like, lean on them. I love you, man. They're like, okay, get away from me. <laughs> just, just love everyone. Whereas, you know, Coke, you just uh -huh. kind of like, just, you know, a machine. Uh -huh. You know, you have people talk fast when they go, like you just want to, you know, you don't want to fuck that way, too. Yeah, I don't even talk to anybody if I don't remember. Yeah. 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 I'm just, how many awards have you won? Yeah, do you remember any good awards that you won? Yeah, I mean, I got, I don't know, five, four or five. Four or five? Something like that. They're yeah. in a box somewhere, I don't know. I got a couple in Europe, and I got a, a few here, and mm -hmm. a couple of Hall of Fames. I don't know. You never really gave a shit about them? I gave a shit. You think it's like, what do you think of the ABN? Huh? What did you think of it? What did you think of it? Uh, you know what? It's a nice pat on the back, but it's kind of mm -hmm. like, I mean, everyone... It's like, you know, I was listening to actually Joe Rogan the other day, and he, I mean, actually today, and he was talking about, you know, the Grammys, the Oscars. I mean, it's like, who cares? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's nice to have a pat on the back, but you know what? You know, when a guy goes up with a girl, and the guy gets an award with the girl, and it's the best BJ, seriously, dude, the guys get an award for best BJ, all you do is there and get your dick sucked. I mean, <laughs> come on. You know what I mean? And it's just like, you know, and now, and every year they add on new categories. It's like, you know, it makes it, and, and now they have, they give, you know, just like the, um, what was it, the, the, um, the Grammys, you know, they have a, a section that they name off a, a week before and then they go for the actual awards just to bring down the quantity of awards they give out. Bullshit. It's a joke. Well, I mean, I've and it's, and it's, you know, and yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying. It, it's, it's who spends the most money on the advertising and who wants to get the biggest, you know what I mean? It's I mean, you could go down the list and go, he's going to win, she's going to win, they're going to win, that's going to win, that, and you know what I mean? It's like, I get like 13 plus nominations a year, and it's, it's like, yeah. You know what? Proof is in the put in the paycheck, you know? I'm get, I was getting top dollar, I was working a lot. Yeah. What, what were you making? The first scene you did, how much did you make? I it? don't. I think it was two fifty, three hundred, maybe. Uh huh. And then your, the last time you worked. I was working paid? at Kink. dot com under a semi contract for fifteen hundred a scene. Wow, really? Yeah. That's fucking great. Yeah, it was. I wasn't exclusive, but I, they, I, I, the deal was some a certain amount of scenes per year, and anything above that, they just had to. You know, they just guaranteed. They just guaranteed me that many. That so many that's scenes. great. That's great yeah. money. Yeah. Can I yeah, get paid that much? Huh? <laughs> Can I get paid that much? Hey, dude, I spent a lot of it. I mean, I was lucky enough to. I it worked out okay, but yeah, the latter half of it, it's still. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, there was there was periods where it was you know good. good. That's great money. So, what's yeah. the most you ever made in a month? Uh, over twenty grand. Over twenty grand. Over over twenty. Yeah, so but that was consistently like that for quite a while, quite a number of years. Uh -huh. So maybe two hundred a year sometimes. Oh, easy. Yeah. A good ten years. Alright, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Vegas loved me so much. Oh yeah, well, that kind of sucks. Right? I lost the money. Yeah. What What happened with the kitten marriage? Hey, you know, it's it, we were both, you know, we were both using. Oh yeah, yeah. cocaine. Well, let's just say we were both using. Okay. You know, she's got family out there too. Okay. You know, it was uh, it's just it was just it was the timing wasn't right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I'm still friends with her. Uh -huh. My wife made her daughter. She's got a daughter now. This three or four. Her second daughter. Um, and my wife made her daughter's one year her birthday cake. Marcy knew so kitten knew. I know my wife, and she asked, because my wife's a really good cook, so she asked her if she would make uh, a uh -huh. doors for So, yeah, we're friends. She seemed pretty cool, you know what I mean? But she, yeah. I remember at that party one time, she was, it seemed to me like she was mad at you or something. That, oh, we had our moments. Yeah. yeah. 
Amen. What part is that? The, uh, we're taking about, through the my phone. Oh, phone. that one. She, she was yeah. She was living with me there at the time. We weren't married. Yeah, I don't know. That was yeah. a crazy. I actually knocked out Bobby Vitale that night too. Did you? Yeah. Huh. After everyone, after Is everyone. Is he acting retarded? Well, then? no, no. Well, yeah, well, yeah, he started getting really weird, and and yeah. I, was I was living thinking with about uh, Charmaine Star. I was living with Gina Ryder, and Tiffany was there. There you go. And, There's two. two and years. I had Kitten there as well. Uh -huh. And at the end of the night, when everyone had gone, I'd been good. I hadn't done any drugs. I was pacing myself with the alcohol. I was like, oh, okay, now what's going? I can really kind of just go for it now. And Bobby's up in the he's up in the bedroom packing stuff into a crate, saying Brianna needs this. And he was taking the the girls that was he didn't even live in the house. He was trying to take their clothes in a milk crate and put it somewhere. And he was like, dude, you got to relax, man. And I, wow. And uh, he locked himself in the bathroom, so I kicked the door down, and then he came out, and then he just started, he was just coming at me. And I was like, don't, don't, and I just, I clocked him, and he just went, and he just dropped. And I was like, oh, no. So I ran down, you remember Mickey G? Yeah. He used to be a paramedic, so I ran, he was there, so I ran down and grabbed him real quick. He knocked him out, no big deal. Oh, I know, but I just, you know, yeah, he you just dropped. Know. Not your, it's not your thing, you know. No, no, I'm not. No, I just kind of panicked. When I knock somebody, I get all bloodthirsty. Yeah. <laughs> No, I know. You do it. He was like a sack of potatoes. Yeah. Well, you're you know. a pretty big guy, yeah. man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, you're 6'2", probably 230 then? At the time, I was probably 240. 240, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, that yeah. weight, and somebody coming into it. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. He just, he, you know, he, 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 just, you know, he just looked at me. He just was like, he was uh -huh. going for me. And I'm uh -huh. just like, oh, here we go. I, 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 I love Bobby to death, man. But it's yeah. just, you know, it, the, the, the demons take over. Yeah. Well, I saw that now. He was like a little weird. Yeah. 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 So, you have so many wild sex stories. Is there any wild sex stories you can tell me on the set? I mean, taking their girls in the back room mm. or in the bathroom. Mm. I mean, I'm sure you did that numerous times. Yeah, even before the scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get acquainted, click with someone before the scene. You want to try it out at first? Sure. How great was that? Great. Now, yeah. Can you tell me any wild stories that happened on the set? Sex stories? I mean, nah, I mean just it's, sex? It's, yeah, it's just sex. Two or three girls at the same time? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. On the set? Or go home with three or four of them afterwards. Yeah. Get on a dare. They're like, ah, oh, you couldn't hang with us. You just worked. We've just done a go go scene. Yeah, all right, fine. Uh -huh. I think it's four. Four of them. All right, let's go. Yeah. I'll get the wow. booze. I'll meet you there. I know I took two home. Yeah. At least. I mean, hey, you know, it's. Everything. That, I mean, obviously, you know, anything that people looking in could imagine, it, it happened and then some, and then, and, and more. Yeah, I mean, it's just wild sex and... Yeah, and it, it was a different time back then where everyone was a lot more closer and tight than they needed yeah, to be. The girls liked you and... Yeah, everyone was, it was a very tight-knit group, you yeah, know what I mean? It was, yeah. Everyone was kind of, would go along with everyone, it was, you know, it wasn't so much backstabbing and shit, there wasn't no... People, you know, oh, yeah, nothing Twitter like and slamming a dog. I mean, sure, it was around, but you know what I mean? But for the most part, everyone got along great. Yeah. They wouldn't look forward to seeing each other on set. It was fun. You know what I mean? Little time, yeah. They'd show up, hey, how you doing? What's going on? You know, because it was a tight group. There was only, you know, a handful of us because we could physically, because there was no Viagra, there was no yeah. Cabajet, there was no pumping your dick up, no, some, they, some implant. People don't know about all that, but <laughs> we know a day before way back mm. when people were natural yeah and you had to have skill yeah to make skill to pay the bills sure right yeah but that's when you knew you found your niche in life i mean when you could physically do that day in day out now this is like however many days in a row some of the two scenes some of the three scenes you got your everyday life you're going through too whatever you're going through i mean i went through marriages i went through divorces i still had to go to work i was still high on cocaine i mean I, there's a lot of things that you know affect that, <clears throat> and you know. But the thing is, oh, and I was saying to to you earlier on today, it's like even on a bad day, we know how to get out of it because we're using this. This controls this, guys. Once you train this, you can train that. Number one, well, gene you gotta have genetics too. Well, genetics too, but what talks you in and out of coming in and out of coming five times over, and yet you still come like that? This mm -hmm. practice makes perfect too, Mike. Right, right, right. Experience, but, practice. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you only get that by you know. Jacking off a lot, or fucking a lot. Um, yeah, but you know, it's once Viagra came out. I mean, there were guys that couldn't work in the industry. All of a sudden, they're coming back and they're bulletproof. Oh yeah. And then I think it just became something that you know is a. Once it became that 
wildly, uh, that wildly, wildly ex excessive, um, no, sorry, ex accessible. Everyone was using it, you know. Guys are coming into the industry trying to compete with, you know, the old timers, popping Viagra in their 20s. Yeah. And I'm like, when you get some of our age, you're gonna be screwed. They probably are screwed, because I know they've moved on to Cavajet. For so those of you who don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's an injectable with an insulin needle at the base of your dick, and it's made basically for paraplegics that can't get their dicks hard, and it makes it like, I've seen guys do scenes afterwards and they're filling out paperwork and their dick is so rock hard still they can't even stand up straight because it's like you know, like a tent pole. And they think they're still performers, right? Yeah. I, I actually seen a guy one time, it was a set on a boxing ring and it was a, yeah, a I think it was a gangbang or something, but one of the girls went to blow a guy. I'm not going to say his name. Huh. I'll tell you after. Anyways, but... She went to blow him, she, and there was a slight little blood spot oh, yeah. at the base. And she goes, you got to open a wound there. He's like, no, no. She goes, no, no, no. You just probably stuck a needle in your dick. I'm, no, I'm not going to work with you. And it was like, he was a big set. Oh. The guy just like, you know, with the tail between his legs. Actually, he couldn't even put his dick between his legs. It was still rock hard. But the guy had to walk out with a complete rock hard dick from shooting his dick up. And the guys that have done too much of that, and they've actually had pumps put into their dicks. It, somebody told me the other day that it causes that weird disease, piranha or pro uh, pro 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 so pre pre preces or uh, yeah prenies. No, no, it's not, I know what you need. I can't pronounce it. You know who you know used to have that was um, he used to have a, he used to have a serious hook on his dick. Jake. Uh, not Jake. Jake Snee. Jake's not natural. No, I know it's natural, but he had he had that hook. Oh, that's what I'm saying is he just he had he had that, oh. but he had that hook. That's oh. what that's a that's a form of it. Is it? Yeah, oh, okay. you can catch you can get as you get older. There's different forms of it for sure. Oh, okay. It doesn't necessarily come through that. Oh, okay. But that can create that. Okay, but yeah. I heard that some people t they do inject thing. Yeah. That's what happens to them. They get ruined or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I've heard of people having to having to go get their, their dicks drained. Because the blood hasn't gone, it's it's not going away, and mm -hmm. they've had to go and then, and I've I've heard it's a syringe, it's like it looks like it like a syringe for a horse, and they've had to drain the blood out, put a big ass needle in there and drain it out. It's terrible. Yeah. But you've seen people take more than one or two Viagra's on site. I've seen people take three to four hundred milligrams over about a four hour period. Is that what is that? It looks like their crazy? head's gonna explode, and they're still struggling. I'm like, you shouldn't be in this line of work, man. Oh. I mean, you just should not. If the thing is, oh, it's Pavlov dog. You think you need the pill, so you're going to take it. Uh -huh. You get used to it. Oh, my God, I'm losing my edge. I can take another one. Yeah. Oh, jeez, I, I need me take another one because it's not going to... No, no, oh, jeez, we've got another two hours left because this... Oh, shit, I've got to take another one. I, eventually, your body's going to get used to that stuff. Resistance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And the thing is, though, that's the funny thing, too. I've seen guys that, you know, you could be on a set, and there might be a, an hour break, something might happen. And they've already taken the Viagra, so it's already going to run out. You know what I mean? They're like panicking. Well, they only got, they only got one. This is the only one they brought. You know what I mean? And it's, I, sh I mean, I, I don't mean to laugh because you know what? Each to their own. But if you get depend on, dependent on a drug or a pill like Cabajet or Viagra, and you got to depend on it, I think you may be in the wrong line of work. Because I got into porn because I enjoy pleasing women. I like getting women off. I love. And I think if you do those drugs, you become a robot. There's no passion. I, you know, there's no uh, emotion. You immediate, you're no emotion. It's zero. You get into it, and literally, you're, you flip a switch. You get you get a hard. And for me, the fun part was, is getting yeah. the edge going, getting that feedback, getting hard. I mean, most of the times, I can just look at the girl, and I'm already ready to go. But just getting that going, you know what I mean? It's fun. It's for, the foreplay of it. You know what I mean? As opposed to just, you know, you know, whipping your dick out and you just, you know, you, you can't wait to get it out because it's uncomfortable because you've got a hard on before you even start. Uh, how do you feel about those type of guys that are cheating and I actually uh, think that they're real performers? Well, it's getting back to the awards thing. I think it's quite hysterical, the fact that everyone's getting performer of the year and everyone's praising them. Their fans are praising them. But they couldn't do it without an injection or a pill. That's the part I find kind of funny. You mm. know what I mean? I mean, it is it's what it is. It's offensive a little bit. Huh? It's a little offensive from I, our day. 
Yeah, because you pull any one of those people and put them into our time period of when we worked, they wouldn't last two seconds. But it's 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 the nature of um, the times where it's it's like it's like um, athletes taking steroids. You know, it's wanted to wanted to one up everyone. Wanted it's, it's, I mean, to me, it's cheating. You think that is that it's, it's, that it's, close? I think that this is way far the way that that I was you think No, 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 no. I was using it as a metaphor. Yeah. As yeah. a metaphor. Okay. You know what I mean? I want to do better than this guy, so I'm going to give myself a little something to, to right, do better than that guy. But they can't even run the race. No, but probably they, you're but saying. They, but they want to. They want to be in the race. Yeah. They want to be in it. But they can't even run the race. No. no, no. So that's what you're saying. No, I didn't use those words. Okay. <laughs> well, but you say that. No, they, no, they no. Won't last two seconds. They would. So they won't last in a race. They can't run the race. All right. If you want to put it in that in that context, yeah. But it's just. I mean. I mean, I got friends in the industry now that, that take Viagra and stuff, and all the power to them. They've actually done well with it uh, financially, and they're the one of the, you know. But still, me personally, I think to pat yourself on the back and call yourself a porn. I, I mean, even the, the term porn star. I think I, I don't even like when I mean, people call me a porn star. I'm a porn actor. I'm a, you know, I was joking to say I'm a thespian, even though I hate dialogue. That's kind of a joke. But yeah. I don't know, man. If if you t if you do Viagra and then gr uh, graduate to Cabajet, and then that doesn't work anymore, and literally your dick doesn't work anymore, so you have to have an implant put in, and it's a pump, and you're still doing porn, then you're in the wrong damn job. That's all I got to say to that. You're in the wrong job because you're you're basically a complete robot. Yeah. You know, you're not doing. You're completely functioning on on something that's not connected to you. Uh, I feel strongly on this yeah. this uh, subject yeah. because I always took pride mm. in making sure I was 100%. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. And so for somebody to come in sideways yeah. no, I agree. I got you. And, and, yeah. and think that they're competing yeah. or they are competing, yeah. is, I, I always still took offense to it. And the fun part is still, blow, still you know, walk all over them. Not walk all over them, still blow them away. Yeah. Performance wise. So how many people do you think, you know? Offhand in the industry, in the industry, or in, 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 in the, today's industry, in, in today's industry, taking supplements. Uh, I would probably, I would probably guess, probably ninety nine percent. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's that's kind of sad. Give or take a couple percent. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it was a beautiful time when we yeah. were wanted, loved, yeah. appreciated for yeah. our skill. Sure. Like a prize fighter, yeah. or like I say, like I said earlier. The best gun for hire. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the whole thing, though. You, if you're dependable, you got you got you got hired. If you were if you weren't consistent, you didn't work that much. You got demoted. You know, if you're consistent, then uh, you got hired. Yeah. You know, I mean, I used to get hired for being the opening scene or the closing scene because they knew I would be get this scene started, and they means they could get you know they would shoot five scenes in a day and they would be able to keep on track. Or at least start that way, or have limited time at the end of the day because locations only got. I've been on one set. There's like shit. The sun's the sun's coming up. We got to get it done real quickly. You got ten minutes. <laughs> it's like ah. Yeah, that's ironic because they would put me on a set to begin and end. Yeah, so I'm saying same thing. Yeah. yeah. That way, yeah. No, for both. Oh yeah. Get them in, yeah. get them out. They yeah. keep me out yeah. hostage sure. all day. But sure. in the meantime, I'd run around from set to set, yeah. doing some quick scenes. Yeah, it's always fun doing that. <laughs> yeah. I always say whoever's got me hired first takes precedent. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I would say you can, I'll work with you, but these guys like they've booked me first, so you're taking the back seat. If you still want to hire me, uh -huh. uh, then it's, I'm good. I would tell as long shit. as they take priority because they got me first. I want to tell them shit. Yeah, and then you appear to North, and he goes, "Oh, I'm just by the airport." <laughs> Which airport? <laughs> there's John Wayne, there's LAX, and then there's Orange County where you live. Well, there might be a San Diego airport. <laughs> I know, right? He was he was renowned for that. The king of the late. Uh -huh. You want to tell you something fucking crazy, ironic? Mm. Is that he beat me to the shoot mm. right here for me. Oh, this one? Yeah, <laughs> he beat wow. me. Out of all those times, wow. he beat me. Somebody else is driving them. Is he still wearing a polo shirt and his standard stuff? Well, a t-shirt, you know? <laughs> so, how, let me, how was it working side by side with T.T. Boy? It's great. It was, it was good because you're competitive. It's always, you step up the game. 
Yeah. It was always good. I always enjoy that. Yeah. You, 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 no, you. Um, I don't want to say this without saying uh, it's, this is a, a compliment, by the way, but you always like to kind of get in their head, the other guy's head, just talk, oh, really? fuck with them. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's a compliment. It's not, I'm not, do I'm not dogging you, because you know you can. Yeah. 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 You, you know you can outperform at wrong rings around them, so if you're like, yeah, what you, get, what you got? Just put them in their place. I used to smash them. Yeah, yeah. I saw that a mile away. Oh, yeah. all right. <laughs> I can hang. <laughs> I tried. Yeah, we did. I mean, we didn't work side by side together always. No, not that much. I mean, we probably did twenty or thirty yeah. scenes. Probably. I mean, normally, I mean, a lot of times, guys like you and me would do a lot of the DP stuff because we could yeah. hang doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot yeah. of the guys is, you know, like, hey, I'll do it. I don't care. Let's right, just get it. Let's get it done. I'm happy to uh, keep the, working. Yeah, the thing is, for me, is like the more see, the more. Um, some guys would just would be picky of like, oh, I don't do DPs, or I don't do groups, or I don't do that. I'm like, you know what, it's, it's a job, man. Just, you know, yeah. you know, a lot of times they go, who do you want to work with? I'm like, I don't care, just, you know, surprise me. I used to say surprise me. Uh, I don't mind. I didn't really know one. I mean, I'm not going to say who I don't mind know list because there's only one or two people, but I'm, I'm not going to say that out loud. Oh, uh, guys or girls? No, no, I guys girls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. girls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just girls I'd work with a lot, and I'm like, oh, okay, I, yeah. I can't work with you anymore because I've worked with them too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I worked with Melanie more fifty times. Yeah, you well, know I mean? you go. yeah. It was just, it was just, it, the girls would try to top from the bottom, and I'm like, no, that's not happening because I'm going to end up hurting you to try and top, try and top you, and this is just not going to happen. It's going to end really bad. It's on camera, so I I'd rather keep you as a friend. I didn't obviously don't tell them that. Yeah. It's just better. I just don't you, work with them. Did you ever feel like sometimes you're working side by side with a guy who's a little bit of a gunfight? Yeah. Who oh, did, yeah. Who's a better gunfighter? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you know, that happens a lot. Yeah. So you got to kind of put them in their place. Did you ever see me um, lose the gunfight? Not that I saw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to be known. That uh, might have been the best. Uh, 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 I've been the, oh, yeah, you're the up there. You know you were, dude. Come on now. I was you the best gunfighter? You know you were. You're up there. Hey, no, I, I give you kudos. Hey, I, trust me. I give you kudos. I give you credit, too. You're a good performer. Thanks. Very good. I don't say that about very many people. I thought Mark and Tom were good performers. Yeah, Tom, no, yeah, for sure. You know, and um, sure. they didn't have the passion I had, you know, yeah. what I mean? but they were good, you know, yeah. and they didn't have the stamina I had. Yeah. I came in shape all the time. Yeah. You know, good cardio and clear mind. Yeah. But anyways, do you think porn is one of the best jobs you've ever had? Yeah. Well, best and worst. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, I, no, I say the worst because of what I, I ended up, what it created, the person it created. I should, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, would I change things? Sure, I would. The fact that I'm here today and the way life is for me today, uh, Sure. I mean, we go through life and we would change things in the past, sure. Everyone, everyone would. There's not, no one, there's not one person that wouldn't. But it's made me who I am today, and I think I've stayed sane through it. But yeah, it's, it's a dream job. I mean, I mean, for practically every man out there, whether they admit it or not, I mean, deep down behind closed doors, they're like, yeah, what am I trying that for? Whatever. I mean, you know. Yeah, I think it's unbelievable. You know, sometimes I compare our time, mm. you know, I was in before you, but still yeah. you're pretty close to the same yeah, yeah, time. Yeah. Our time is almost like that it'll never come back. No. The Old West. Sure. The Old West. If you you got, you got, I like your references with the Old West. It's funny how you keep throwing those right? in there. The Old West didn't yeah. last that long. The rambunctious, sure. wild times yeah. from like after the Civil War, all the, yeah. you know, the warriors and the soldiers, and they all did their thing. Mm. It only lasted for about 25 years. And so the Wild West of porno yeah. only lasted about 25 years. Yeah. You know, or 30 it's years. It's you say Wild West, too, because a lot of it was shot guerrilla style with, like, locations and places yeah. where you just had a certain amount of time and you got to get it done real quick. It was illegal, too. Yeah, you know, yeah. Ate. Well, Ronnie used to tell me stories that they would pull into a parking structure because they were, you know, the, yeah. you know it was the feds or whoever knew they were shooting and they would have two cars that would get, go out. I mean, it's like, you know, it's yeah. like... <laughs> <laughs> Crazy stuff. Like Hawaii Five O. Uh huh. <laughs> like mafia stuff, trying to switch out cars. So it and was stuff. exciting. You know, yeah. it was an exciting sure. time. Sure. It, so it'll never come back. No. Do you feel that way? It'll ever? You ever feel that? That time is gone. The love is over, it's because right? Because of this thing. Yeah. It's all because of this thing. Yeah. Everyone's everyone's a porn star. Yeah. Oh, of course. But you ever heard that old saying? This is part of it. Familiarity mm. breeds 
contempt. Right. And that's exactly yeah. what that monster does. Yeah. Well, you know what I always say. So you know that you know the song "Video Killed the Radio Star." Yeah, I love that song. Internet killed the porn star. Oh yeah. It just, I oh, mean, yeah. that's completely it's saturated. Everyone's, everyone is, you know. Yeah. I'm gonna bring up this point, mm. which kind of irks me a little bit, mm. you know. And you know, you're you're there with us, you know, at the same time. But this for me is offensive, and irritating. I think it's ridiculous, mm. right? I think it's unfair for somebody to make this statement mm. after they were given so much love. Randy Spears mm. put on a YouTube video saying how bad porn was for him. Yeah, I'd heard. I mean, you talking about the you talking about the religious thing? Well, he's saying how bad it is. I didn't. I didn't hear all of that, but I, I did. I I did catch parts of him kind of saying, because um, uh, we know Randy. We, I, we know him very, very well. Right. So, you don't want to but, say but, anything, though, no, do you? no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not going to go there with that. But for him to criticize and and say that porn took him and made him the person he was, he was already that person before he got into the porn. I mean, it, that's his religious side trying to try. He's, you know what? If it's keeping him alive and keeping him sane, all the power to him. But when you diss it to the level he has, and maybe it's saving face within his community. I don't know, but mm -hmm. Randy, you're full of shit. <laughs> you I love you to death, but you just, I mean, and you can contest to that. Yeah, so much love in this business. I yeah. would never receive that much no, love. I know, right? Yeah, no, he was, yeah, yeah, from the love, everyone. The chosen from child. The top, from the top down. Love. Yeah. And how many times did he not show? No. Yeah. Huh? Mm. How many times did they forgive you? Yeah. Anyway. If that's what he's doing to keep his, uh, keep his head straight, then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, we don't wish him any harm. No. I don't wish him any harm. No. I mean, I, I mean, you know, knowing him, it's probably the religious side is what's keeping him, his head straight. So, yeah, he used to his own. Did you ever look across the set, you know what I mean, and see a co star, a female co star? Mm. And you said, damn, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it through this one today. Because, you know, you either don't like the way she looks or the energy's mm -hmm. off or. Mm -hmm. No. No? No. No, that's why I liked a lot of times when they, they would say, I would walk onto a set and say, okay, I would joke and say, I'd walk into the dressing room, i go, okay, who's, I'm not knowing who I'm working with, I, I don't want them to tell me. Because a lot of guys oh, would yeah. research the girl, okay, who am I working with? I'm like, I always walk in and go, okay, who's my victim? Uh -huh. I'd say a hand pop up, i go, great. And it's like walking into a, a bar. Uh -huh. It's like, mm, okay, she looks fine. <laughs> you know, this lady's like, I, I don't want, I just, I want to find out there. I don't want to think about it. Sure, it's nice to think about working with someone. So you know what I mean. Like, oh, you working with someone? Oh, great. Yeah. But it's kind of I like the surprise. But there was a couple, like you said, that you had enough of. Yeah, it was just I just I it was just it was just uh, yeah it just didn't click, and I was like uh, I'd rather not. You know. So you started directing later on. You know what? That was kind of that was for. Oh, excuse me. Um, what company was it? I did. Okay, the directing part was it was a new company. It was Greg. Uh, was it Alves? I was. It was two Gregs. So I always get the names wrong. And Greg was, Dunn, Greg Alves. Greg Alves, Greg Dunn. They ended up partnering yeah. together. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember the name of the company. It was zero time. Zero, zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. Yeah. Um, and he sat me aside before we started doing this. He goes, "Listen, I want. I wanted to start this thing off. I want to put you as the director." And basically was saying, if I got my shit together, because he knew I was, you know, a heavy cokehead, an addict. And he said, but, you know, we'll put your name on this. We'll basically put your, basically, he's put my name on it on the first, on the first run of his, of uh, his, uh, we did like three or four, all with my name on it, directing. So it kind of got it out there as more of a market advertising and stuff. I never directed it. We just basically, he just shot the camera and I just ran with it, you know what I mean, in each scene. There was, a, I think there was, I can't remember the premise of a couple of them were. So I got, I got director's credit. I didn't direct anything. I didn't want to direct. I was, I'm too lazy. As my motto goes, get laid, get paid, go home, no drama. And the thing is, I even, I even screwed up that potential I had with him because he was basically offering me, you know, a deal. It yeah. could have happened, worked into a deal. Yeah, it was my... a test run on the first couple, uh -huh. a couple of the movies, and I, I screwed those up. But uh -huh. as far as what was uh, what we, the potential could have been. Yeah. yeah and he was, you know, he he gave me a chance. I gave him credit for it, but he, you know, I I screwed that up. I mean, I'm thinking that 
I never saw you as a super kinky guy, but I'm thinking sometimes you might have been thinking some kinky things. Were you oh, kinky? Was, no, well, I, you know what company I ended up working yeah. for. I think it was kink.com. Right. It was BDSM. Right. I mean, well, I'm not, yeah, but definitely the drugs and the booze definitely brought out that side. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. It magnified everything and then some. Yeah, there's stuff that I was doing on that stuff that I never have done since. Yeah. It definitely brings out that side. Yeah, it's, uh, but the thing is when you, people like, like uh, I don't know about you, but when you have that much sex with that many people and the variety and things, there's like nothing you haven't really done. It's, you know, when something opens up the floodgates and you kind of like, yeah, you go for it. You go. You when you're in the flow, you're in the flow. Whatever it might be to whoever or forever. But oh, yeah. your brain can go. Oh yeah, no, it goes though. Yeah, no, it's but, crazy. Yeah. Who was your favorite girl of all time? <sighs> you know, you have to pick one. You said no. you were with Ginger Lynn, so you had no, tell me about I dated that. Ginger. No, me and Ginger dated. I was okay. a big fan of hers, and and we worked with each other, and we just like hit it off, you know. And we, there was a lot of person. There's a lot of similar. Traits? Traits, that's, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of similar, I, I like say, that. I, I love her to death, you know. Yeah. Uh, so let's just say there was a lot of similar traits. So okay. It, well, that was kind of, yeah, it's going to be a, um, a very volatile relationship at certain points. Oh, really? yeah, well, yeah, because oh. there's other things that kind of get in the way of the, that can make things worse. Yeah. On both sides, I'm not taking. Uh -huh. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm taking as much of the credit for creating issues as much as she probably should. But she, I, mean, she, but I love it. Yeah, she was a sweetheart. She was great. She, you know, and it's, it was nice to date someone about the same age. Yeah. You know, my wife's the same age as me. My past, yeah. you know, wives and other relationships have been ten years younger. Some are a little bit younger than that, and there's something to be said for that. Well, it just yeah. doesn't work for me personally. But she was like a superstar. She oh, was she great. was the first. She yeah. was really the first kind of superstar, well, yeah. really. Well, I think Seika was pretty hot. Seika was hot. Yeah, yeah. Seika. But, I, dude, I love Seika, man. I did yeah. a signing with Seika and, and, uh, and Yeah, Ginger. I did one too. She's yeah, cool. Yeah, she's a riot, man. Yeah, she's very fun. nice. But yeah, Seika was, no, Seika was the first. Yeah, yeah. And sure. Ginger Lynn was like, yeah. yeah, in my time, when I'm a kid, yeah, yeah, Ginger yeah, Lynn. Sure. The 80s, I'm, yeah, in yeah, a, yeah, I'm yeah. working in a truck shop. Yeah. Ginger Lynn, yeah. coming here to this this uh, bookstore. Come. Oh, anyways. Well, she to pick, to pick, yeah, but to, to pick one. There's yeah. so many out there that, that that have been in the top. Let's say top ten in general. Yeah. To pick one, put them on the top of the heap. It's 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 impossible. Yeah. It really is because there's so many there's so many number ones out there. If you want to mm -hmm. add a ten, you don't need there's so many. So it's like you yeah. know. There's some good ones. Great. You know ones. what I mean? It's 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 hard. It's yeah. It's almost impossible. You remember a girl named Shawnee Cates? I know the name. Oh, she was great. Mm. But um. So Ginger Lynn, you know, because I never work with her. Yeah. You know, I mean, every some of these girls slip right by me. Yeah. Sometimes I really wouldn't get the love until later on. You know right. what I mean? But anyway, so she was great sexually. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm just curious. I, you man know, to I, man. I, yeah, you know I, mean? I know. I, I mean, yes, she was great. I mean, there was a lot of things that we clicked on. I mean, I was, you know, but party. This, yeah. The no, party no, helps. No, no, no. The, no. Party, yeah, the party's working out. It, but there's, a, you know, there's a physicality when you, you know, when you click with someone, regardless of the drugs or the, you know, what or whatever that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a person. If there's a physical connection there, that you know, that that sometimes gets in the way of everything else because that's all there is with some relationships and everything else is just kind of like that's all you stand around for is the sex and everything else is <laughs> is shit yeah. and then eventually that you know that dissipates too yeah. so sometimes you can keep a relationship going because you know the sex is good and that's just damn that's destined to fail destined to fail you're right the volcano can only erupt so long mm -hmm. you know yeah. the fire can only burn yeah. so bright and it kind of dims yeah seems like so you know you're Retired now for, mm. you know, six, six and years? A, six and a half years, yeah. How do you feel about going from all this smorgasbord of flesh yeah. and love and money and yeah. all that to, you know, I guess one... Civilian life. One civilian life, yeah, civilian life <laughs> and just one person, right? Yeah. I mean, is that what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just what, it's a, it's a huge say, contrast. Yeah. Well, the thing is, yeah, I mean, it's... That's part of a mind, mind, mind uh, screws with your head too. As far as I knew, it was my run within the industry. I was over it. I was sick of it. It was uh, the last two or three years. It was just a paycheck. I didn't want to go to work. It was just the money. But I was just, you know, putting money away and just working with it. And then I met my wife, and she, um, 
we started having feelings right away. We knew it, she knew me through. We knew each other through a mutual friend. And then uh, after a couple of months, we just clicked. And I, you know what? It's like me giving up the drinking and everything else. It ran its course. As far as that life, that world. I mean, I, I, I burnt every candle at every end in the middle. I mean, it's just, I doubt it, been there. And it's like, it's time to slow down, man. I'm in my, you know, I'm 54 now. At the time I was, you know, late, I was 48. I'm just, it's time. It's yeah. just, it gets old, you know what I mean? And there's got to come a point where it's, it's, you know, you can't keep doing that stuff. I mean, it's got to be a point. There's got to be a cutoff point uh, to some degree. And I wanted to have a regular life. So, and I started having feelings for her, and she started having feelings for me, and it's, um, and it's worked out. So, you don't have any remorse or any, um, any remorse. hungry, no remorse, because you're not in the action anymore. That's sure, I mean, I mean, no, no, no remorse. No. Do I think about it? You sure. miss it. I mean, no, I'm not saying miss it. Do I think about it? Yeah. Do I have flashbacks? Hell yeah, especially even today talking about it, because you're bringing up stuff I haven't even, even thought about in 20 years. I mean, we had some great times. Yeah. At Dorenzi's. Oh, no, no, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but go ahead, keep going. Yeah, no, no, it's, um, it was the right time and the right place for me to hang it up. It was, you know. Yeah. I, I couldn't keep living in the environment and the pace and everything I was doing. It just, it, it taken a toll on me, too. It yeah. was just, it was time to move on and have a, have a civilian life, a real life. You, you know, know my wife, my wife run, well, runs a non-profit. We work in, in Africa and stuff. And I'm doing stuff I never would have ever believed in, so it's uh, pretty amazing. Can stuff. we see those pictures? Are those? Um, yeah, you can see them. These are just some of them. Uh, this will show one. You know, yeah, you can scroll through those. So, Stephen and his wife go to Africa and help. We basically she raises money and um, she does all the work. I just carry the luggage and take the photos. And uh, it's micro loans and um, sustainable living and income and creating co corp um, cooperatives, so they can basically have some structure in in, um, in farming. You know, micro loans anyway might be anywhere from twenty to fifty dollars, but you know, when you're making a dollar fifty a day and having at least four kids working mm -hmm. in the fields, it goes a long way. It just gives them some structure and, and then a couple of processing factories where they can process the, the coffee or the rice or the maize so it cuts out the middleman so they can sell it for a higher cost so it's just basically you know and building some homes too she has about three plus hundred homes that have been built oh. it's just tin roofs and two by fours but it's oh. better than a grass hut yeah yeah i mean the sun can beat you up all that stuff right? well, just and just having a family i mean having yeah. kids and, and being in a you know if it's raining and the rain out there when it hits you know what i mean i mean we're in rwanda and uganda so mm -hmm. i mean africa's a huge continent so yeah, yeah. Well, it's a helping hand it's nice yeah it's humbling to say the least i mean yeah. especially when you come back to la la land and yeah. you know what so, we have and take yeah. it for granted yeah sometimes a lot of times and you might notice this you know in the business too mm -hmm. you know what i mean is that sometimes you don't know how good you had it till it's gone. Oh, yeah. Been there, done that. Right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's another thing is, too, it's like, I mean, you're the same way as, I mean, I've, I've tried to stay humble through everything I've done, too. And maybe within the adult industry. It's like, I never forgot where I came from. Ever. You know what I mean? I mean, a lot of people kind of, I've seen people change. I'm like, you You've know. You've seen I, a lot of girls, mostly. Well, yeah, but I've seen some guys change. I'm like, yeah. dude, I remember, I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna start naming people, but it's uh, but it's a shame because you see them change, and I'm like, I remember you when you were first in this industry, dude, and you have completely got an attitude now. You've changed, like, and I, I'm like, I know you're still that guy, <laughs> but you're putting on this whole bullshit. You yeah. know, I remember you when you were that guy. I, I, I hate to see that. Yeah, well, it goes to people's heads. I've seen a lot of girls do that. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, for it's sure. kind of weird because yeah. you know what. The story is mostly 99.9% mm. .9 of the time. Yeah. Once you think you're so almighty powerful yeah. and great, that means you're here. Yeah. And that means that's a long fall. Yeah. And you know, that's sure. people don't know until it's too, too, they're in the yeah, hole. Yeah, 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 sure. But, sure. anyways, yeah. you know, I wish no harm. I appreciate all my time in the business. Sure. You know, I'm sure. thankful to Jim South, that's yeah. his board. Yeah. And he, he let me in, you know? Yeah. But so, how would you sum up 
all the wonderful experiences in our business. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not really, you know, the stripping, but this is what where I I relate to you at. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. In two words, can you describe? In two words. Two words. Yeah. You might throw a little middle in there. No, I know. Um... Sum it up. Uh, life changing. Okay. Uh, um, I'm trying to think of something else. Maybe job of a lifetime. That's nice. I like yeah. that. One. I mean, it's you know you you can't you can't describe it to people. You know, I mean, everyone deep down to some degree. Obviously, it's not going to cater to everyone. But you know, male or female, to some degree, there's a fantasy that you know, people have fantasies, sexual fantasies, right? I mean, regardless, I don't care who the hell you are. Or religion, you still have whatever, whatever level you 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 have them, all of you. <laughs> so this just takes that to another level where we get to act out on it and and fulfill those fantasies and take them in, in every direction we want to or can take them in. And it just being it's being free. Freedom. Freedom. Sexual freedom is pretty amazing feeling. Well, you know, and sure, there's repercussions. You know, there's that. There, there, it's like you know, but. I knew what I was getting into. I thought there was going to be consequences. I thought I was going to lose friends. I didn't lose one. Sure, there's people that give me a hard time, but they're the people that don't know any better. They're the people that usually don't get laid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's always someone that's going to hate you. That's oh, just the yeah. way there's, it is. I know a lot of people hate me, but you're a very nice person. Yeah. You always were. Yeah. And I don't see too many people hating you in my, when I saw you know, yeah, what yeah, you yeah, yeah. said. Sure. Of course, you know, people always want to talk about me, blah, 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 blah. You know, but I take care of them. But, um, <laughs> you know, always. But um, I always, I said this to some people, mm. and I want to know how you feel about yeah. this. I myself wouldn't trade my experiences in the business mm. for a billion dollars because they'll yeah. never come again. No, I wouldn't. And the thing is, I, I don't know what I would do with a billion dollars. I'd probably kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> too much party. You know what? I don't want that much money. Huh? I don't want it. I'm I'm kind of happy with where I'm at. You know what I mean. I've lived the life. I've done it. Yeah. I've I've lived the life of a rock star. I, I'm good. I'm good. A billion dollars can't buy what you got. Yeah. I don't believe. No. The experiences. No, you know? not experience. No. Oh. Not even not even close. It's you, okay. you have to go through what to get. Yeah. The time and the place and everything else. It cannot be reproduced. Oh. The old west. Yeah. The wild west. Yeah. Is over. Same as I mean, even even the the, the, the Chippendales days. That time yeah. and place cannot be cannot. You got two yeah. Wild West guys, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I I look back uh -huh. and I say, man, you know, I'll never get that again. Yeah. I, I miss it. Yeah. I don't want to do it again. Yeah. Well, not at my age, right? Yeah. But it was so beautiful. Yeah. The ups and downs, the love, and it was unbelievable. It was it was crazy town. Yeah. It was just. Yeah. I mean, you, you perform longer than I did, but I still performed mm. for 17 sure. years. I did my own stuff, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I had a dream, you know what I mean? Yeah. What I accomplished, you know... Oh, yeah, but you're one of the few guys out there that actually made something of it. I mean, there's, and there's a handful. Yeah. And you need pretty much know everyone I'm talking about. It's yeah. a handful. Well, I don't know anybody, any performer, besides probably Rocco. Al did okay. Yeah. But besides Rocco, you know, Joey did good. Yeah. That's it, Yeah. as far as I know. You know, making money. Run Jeremy. He just, he just like, didn't spend it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I I distributed. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, no, I did, no, no. Yeah. I, I produced sixteen hundred movies. Sure. You know, and I sure, you know, sure, sure. You know, I mean, sure. I'm not excited. Sure. But yeah. But okay, it was just a beautiful time. You yeah. Know, just you know, it it's gone. But yeah. you know. I mean, it's 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 an experience that'll never be. You know, it's something that's. It's just weird when I'm walking around and people say, hey, Mark, and I'll still turn, even though they're, they're, right. they're saying to someone else, but it's, it's still there. Uh -huh. I'll still go up. I mean, sometimes it is, but I don't get recognized anymore. I mean, uh -huh. this guy's funny, but when it does happen, it's kind of, I get a, it's funny. Yeah, I wanted to ask that question. Yeah. That one slipped by. Mm -hmm. What was it like when you started getting recognized in the streets? Oh, that was, that definitely fueled the ego, man. It was, yeah. you know, I'd go out at clubs at night and it was, <clears throat> it was you know, 
Yeah. You know always go looking for it. I mean, I'm embarrassed to say that, but it kind of yeah. gets to that point where uh -huh. I, I get it, where people become these huge mega stars. And the worst thing is, is when these people become these, you know, reality overnight one hit wonders, and they get all this fame, and all of a sudden, they're, you know, they're back on the street again, and they don't know what the hell hit them. It totally is a mind fuck for those for those poor people. Um, yeah, no, it's it's an ego boost. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, for sure. You go. I mean, it's it still happens. You know, it's kind of. But they're the true diehard fans. They're the ones that still still recognize it. Uh, Even though I'm skinny and old now. But. Uh, yeah, I, I, it got kind of weird in about 2000 for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, yeah. But it was cool. You know? Yeah. So all right, back we're out of that. We're back into the trendy topics of today, right? Yeah. This happened a few days ago, which mm. is very spooky. Mm. Spooky as hell. Sad as hell. Yeah. And scary as hell, mm. you know. Really frightens me, and, and I don't frighten that easy. You know, I've been in gang fights all over, twenty guys, and mm. that didn't frighten me. No. But anyways, this here, what do you think about Amber Geiger and her being found of found guilty mm. of shooting that guy in his apartment, mind his own business? Mm. She was sentenced to ten years. Yeah. Right. First, I want to know how you feel about that, and then I want to know how do you feel about the person, the innocent guy who was testified yeah and got shot and they blew his head off yeah that was a total a hit. that was a total hit i mean he got shot in the head like that twice or something like that i heard. um i think she should have gotten more time i think they should have thrown the book at her for someone in her line of work on top of what she did and you don't confuse an apartment you walk in and then you pull your gun out and shoot them you point the gun and go, what, first of all, you point the gun and go, whoa, what are you doing in my place? You know, just pull it out and shoot. The guy was sitting on his couch. So, yeah, I, I had 10 years and she's only going to do five and then she'll get out even more that she's on good behavior. I mean, it's, it's, it's bull. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's not right. I mean, it's just, it just goes to, shows to prove the uh, racial bullshit within the, uh, within the legal system. You know, and to top it off, some, you know, whoever, usually it's probably a racial thing, is the person that took the guy out that testified. Who, to, who took on. him out? What, why? Well, it's got to be racially motivated. The fact yeah. that a, a blonde white woman that showed up, it got convicted, and he, he I, I don't know, I'm speculating, I'm just talking out of my ass, but that's what it kind of looks like. Really? I, I would go deeper in that, that's what I would think. Well, I was just painting it, I was painting the out. I wasn't going to go any further than that, but because I, I don't know. I wouldn't even say it was racial. I think it would just be inside, just a, a warning. Yeah. That's what I was, how yeah. I see well, it. Well, I mean, to go, you know, we don't know to go. I mean, uh, it's, it's regardless, it's, it's, it's very extreme. It's very, very fishy. It's, it's fucked. Terrible, yeah, very sad. Yeah. It's a heartbreak for yeah. me. Yeah. Because you see that kid, Yeah. a good looking kid, yeah. and just. Yeah, I just caught the just, tail end of what happened. I just heard it. I didn't even uh, I heard it on the radio, but I didn't uh, I didn't see anything on the, on the news itself. But I heard I heard. I mean, yeah, it's just yeah, that's ugly. Very ugly. Yeah, very sad. Very ugly. Yeah, she and should have been locked up. My, period. Never. No. No parole. They my heart goes out to both of those two victims. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 So I want to ask this: What celebrity, you know, movie star, singer? Mm. Um, athlete mm. would you like to you know be f i know you're married but you know we, let's say fantasize about right it. you know taking a bit my free pass is that the one yeah your free about? pass all pass <laughs> my whole pass <laughs> <laughs> oh geez. you deserve at least one of those yeah oh man you like brunettes right uh, it would probably be an olympic sprinter or something like that really yeah i like that body of oh, the sprinters then huh yeah the, oh, oh uh, yeah something the legs and the yeah. strong yeah Athletic role. Yeah. So, but no celebrities that you that stand out. I don't. Scarlett Johansson. Um, yeah, but it's Kate, like it's. Yeah, but yeah. Kate, I can watch. What's I, that yeah. beautiful girl's name? And um, I don't. I don't. My brain doesn't Beckinsale. go there. Like Kate Beckinsale. Yeah, Kate she's Beckinsale. She's beautiful. Yeah, wow. English too. Yeah. Uh, I hope she's a bit of an attitude though. All right. Well, yeah. with that face, I. I, I know someone's a director. The director her that said that she's uh, quite the. Um, Smart. Prima donna. Oh yeah. Yeah. She's beautiful. But yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, yeah, you know what? I nobody? don't. I. It's weird. I. I don't think. Um, yeah, I, I really have never had anyone that I put out there to go. Oh, that would be really. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, Don't get me wrong. There's quite a few uh -huh. <laughs> to pick one. Uh -huh. I, I don't know. 
All right, well, how mm. about this question? Mm. And you got to be truthful. Mm. How many or who mm. did you bet in those days of Bar One mm. or Chippendales that was turned into a movie star or an actress? Mm. <laughs> did there some? Uh, there's a couple. I mean, yeah. this is way back, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, it's probably a couple. Really? Yeah. Anyone want to say? No. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not cool, dude. No? No. But, but they were married or something? Uh, Boyfriend, you think? It's just not cool. Yeah? You mean at the time? Yeah. No, but this is 30 years ago, right? No, no, it's not cool, dude. No, huh? no. The past oh. is the past, man. Okay. That's, that's, that's mine. Uh, <laughs> but do you have this, but you had a few? Yeah. A few movie stars? A few people in the entertainment. Yeah. Movie stars or, or just few producers? people in entertainment. Yeah, but there's no names, so movie stars. A few people in entertainment. Okay. I'm just going to give you the broad range. All right. Was it great? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to drive you nuts, but I'm not going to tell you. Okay. Okay, check this out. You've heard about all the robots being made, right? There's a like, robots. Like, you seen that robot on, on YouTube? And yeah, you're talking about like ex, ex, ex Machida uh, style that's going towards, you know, the movie, right? Right. But yeah, I'm, yeah right now there's Eventually like, it'll be there, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you saw it, you're talking about the... Yeah, you know... Which robots are you talking about? The one that's, you know, been interviewed on yeah. TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. She answers yeah, questions. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. That robot, mm. you know, is going to be upgraded very soon. No, okay. not that one, but the robots yeah, yeah, are yeah. coming. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, for sure. What do you think about the ro about sex robots? I think uh, well, it goes two ways. I think it's great for people that I mean, just like just like porn is great for people, the people that are socially inept, the people that uh, can't get out of their homes for whatever, or can't socialize, or can't be in that bracket. I think porn is a really good release. It's a good outlet for people. It's it's a very good outlet. Obviously, there's people in there that are not good people that that it creates other issues but so I think the dolls would be or the man, uh, the robots would be another outlet for people that you know it's a next level of that but then again but then people kind of go well shit if they're that creative or if they're that you know they could I guess you would go to the Terminator effect where they would eventually start taking over shit but that's that's like that's going to be way beyond our lifetime to even think about that you know, Maybe. <laughs> they have theories that yeah. once they get going, yeah. you can't stop them. Yeah. Well, I think that's... The evolution of it. I mean, the way things are going right now, it's like, well, I don't know what they're saying is for every is it every year or every two years, the speed of things quadruples, yeah. triples, and, and on and on and on. So, exactly. yeah, so, so in the next 20 years, it'll be interesting to see where it's at. You know what I believe? Yeah. I believe that... They will have. They will have no, no other, no more need. Yeah. There will be no need for male performers mm. in thirty to forty years. Male performers. Yeah. As porn. in, for porn, there won't be any porn back then. But, no, that's what I'm saying. It's, if there is porn, it's going to be robots. It's going to be. It's going to be. It's going to be. Yeah. It's going to be. Over, it's going to be obsolete Gone. in the next. I would say ten, ten, yeah. ten years. So, it's already going that way. Right. Yeah. Our days. Yeah. And that wow, that stuff is is over. Yeah. And you, VH tapes, tapes are going to be collectors. It's just like the eight tracks. <laughs> uh, they, yeah, they probably take up too much space. <laughs> I know, right? right? You know? Yeah. But, yeah. Have you ever seen an alien? Not personally. Do you believe in aliens? I don't disbelieve it. Yeah. There's something out there. Yeah. Be, you'd be, you'd be, to me personally, you're a fool to think there's nothing out there. To, 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 if you really put perspective. We're not even a grain of sand at the beach yeah. compared to really what's out there as far as the, the, the solar system, the, the planet. It, it's, it's, I mean, the word infinity basically just says it right there. It, it's to think we're the only ones is pretty damn arrogant, if you ask me. That's yeah. how I feel about it. I don't know about you. Oh. That's how I feel. I believe that there's... I, I want to see him. Oh, I do too. I like to see I just him. I want to see a ghost. I don't, do, I don't disbelieve in ghosts, but I want to see one. I've seen a ghost. Yeah. Yeah, you've never seen a ghost? Not yet. I've seen a couple. Yeah. Yeah, they used to always come around me. Yeah. I see a girl saw a big spirit next to me in the bed and said, mm -hmm. I'm not coming back to your house. Yeah. Anyways, okay. So yeah, that's yeah. pretty much the end. Anything you might want to say or state that we didn't touch on? No, we covered a lot. Um, no. 
just uh, just remember that uh, porn actors are human beings too. <laughs> Not the other side, yeah. No, man. It's like you know what we, you know. It's the old saying: never judge a book by the cover, because oh. behind, clo behind closed doors, you know, everyone's human underneath that that crazy skin. Yeah, yeah. You know? we, you know, we're just you know. It, you, the thing that people don't understand totally is that you could be a porn star, you know. Also, yeah. if you went the other way, girls sure. working at the hamburger stand, sure. making you know two dollars sure. back in the eighties, or. Yeah. Ten dollars or twelve dollars sure, now an hour, sure. and pretty soon you're making a thousand bucks in yeah, two hours. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. You got total freedom of your life. Sure. But yeah, anyways, sure. this is the end of our interview. Mark Davis, the shy country boy, I didn't even know. You know, turns the turns from the shy country boy to the one of the biggest studs, one of the best studs, and one of the most loved performers of all time. You know, so I hope people understand who Mark Davis is. Thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. For it's actually the longest. No, 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 sorry. I mean, rephrase that. The most in depth interview yeah. I've ever done. So. You did one almost this long? Never. Okay. Not even this in depth either. No, okay. you guys, there's stuff that was out there that we could discover, we, we discussed that no one knows. So. It's intimate because we know each yeah. other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no but it's, you know, it's timing's everything. It's good for me to get it out. It's therapeutic at the same time. And maybe at the same time, it might help some people at the same time. Okay, one more, one more question. Yeah. You know, just to, for the people. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Is there any advice mm. that you would give male males? Mm -hmm. You know, just male human beings. Yeah. To keep their women happy, what would you? What advice would you give to them? Ask questions. Talk to them. Communicate. Don't be afraid to communicate. It has to be an open book. It has to be a two-way street. It has to be a two-way street. And relationships are based on trust. Jealousy will destroy a relationship. So if you not, if, if you have to think twice about where they're going, what they're doing, looking at their phone, then you don't need to be in a relationship. The period, you just it's not going to happen because it's going to explode. You're going to create it, or they're going to push them away and they're going to leave. And it has to be a two-way street. I mean, it happens. You know, women. I mean, not just men. It goes both ways. But you know, yeah. communication is everything. Communication and trust. Period. If you don't have either one of those, it's not going to fly. But sexually? Or well, that, but the thing is, communication and trust, I mean, okay. it goes with sexually too, though, because okay. you feel comfortable about talking about what you might want to do. Uh -huh. uh, you know what I mean? It's like... Fantasies? Yeah. You know, no, if you... If, I mean, the thing is, that's why a lot of guys and women will go get something on the side, because they haven't discussed it with their partner, because they don't think they're going to do that with them or for them. And then if they're not going to do that and you're going to go on the side of them, why the hell are you with them in the first place? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just uh, talk. Talk's number one, man. Communicate. And the thing is, though, lay it out there. you got nothing to lose. If you can lay it out there right at the bat, they can run <laughs> or they can stay. They'll respect you a lot more if you lay it out there on the line from the, from the get-go because they already know what you're about. You're being honest, you're being truthful, and then a lot of times that can be very endearing and attractive. Yeah, you hear that, everybody? That is from a true professional. <laughs> so take those words to heart. We're out. Yeah, Teach Boy TV out. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You're a good guy. <laughs>